Sangita Nikaya, The Connected Discourses. Sagata Vagga Sangyutta, Devata Sangyutta, Satullapakaika Vagga, the Satullapa section. Sutta number 1.38. Sakalika Sutta, The Rock Splinter. This is what I personally heard. Once, the Blessed One was living at Rajagha's Maddakuchi Deer Park. It was during the time when the Blessed One's foot had been cut by a rock splinter. As a result of this injury, the Blessed One was experiencing terrible bodily feelings, which were painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly disagreeable, the Blessed One endured those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what was happening, without becoming unsettled or agitated. The Blessed One then folded his outer robe into four, and by getting into the lion's posture, he lay down on his right side, with one leg wrapped over the other, while continuing to stay mindful and fully aware. Later, when the night had advanced, seven hundred devas from a host of stunningly beautiful Satullapa Deva hosts appeared brilliantly illuminating the entirety of Mandakuchi Deer Park, and by approaching the Blessed One, paid homage to him. Then one of those devas spoke this inspired utterance in the presence of the Blessed One while standing to the side. My dear, the recluse Gautama is truly a Naga indeed. Take a look and see how, just like a mighty elephant, quietly the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings, which are painful indeed, and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, Despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what is happening, without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then, one more of those devas uttered these inspired words in the presence of the Blessed One, while standing to the side. My dear, the recluse Gautama is truly a lion indeed. Take a look and see how, just like a mighty lion, quietly the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings, which are painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what is happening without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then another from those devas expressed this inspired utterance in the presence of the Blessed One while standing to one side. My dear... The recluse Gautama is truly a thoroughbred stallion indeed. Take a look and see how, just like a thoroughbred stallion, quietly the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings which are painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what is happening, without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then 
One more of those devas spoke this inspired utterance in the presence of the Blessed One, while standing to the side. My dear, the reckless Gautama is truly the chief bull indeed. Take a look and see how, just like the chief bull, quietly the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings which are painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness while staying fully aware of what is happening without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then, one more of those devas uttered these inspired words in the presence of the Blessed One while standing to one side. My dear, the recluse Gautama is truly a titan indeed. Take a look and see how, just like a mighty titan, quietly the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings which are painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what is happening without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then, one more of those devas spoke this inspired utterance in the presence of the Blessed One, while standing to one side. My dear, the reckless Gautama is truly fully tamed and in control indeed. Take a look and see how he is so completely tamed and in control. Quietly, the Blessed One is experiencing terrible bodily feelings, which are painful and intensely sharp in their piercing and agonizing character. However, despite them being harrowingly and uncomfortably disagreeable, the Blessed One endures those painful sensations with ever-present mindfulness, while staying fully aware of what is happening without becoming unsettled or agitated. Then, one more of those devas spoke this inspired utterance in the presence of the Blessed One, while standing to the side. My dear, look at the recluse Gautama indeed. See how his samadhi is so deep and unshakably collected, where nothing could ever move it. Look how he has developed his heart to such perfection, where it is utterly liberated and fully released, where it neither bends forward nor leans backward, nor is it precariously steady through forceful suppression. So, to presume that all those painful experiences the Blessed One is undergoing could possibly overcome him by bringing down such a naga of a hero, an elephant of a man, a lion of a man, a thoroughbred stallion of a man, a chief bull of a man, a titan of a man, such a perfectly tamed and controlled man, then how could such a foolish and utterly stupid assumption be anything other than an absolute absence of vision and the wisdom to truly understand indeed? Although Brahmins and other recluses who go on spending their lives studying the five Vedas torturing their bodies for an entire century, subjecting themselves to all sorts of self-mortification. Yet, their hearts remain in the thick bog of ignorance, lost and unable to ever taste real freedom. That's because such individuals, who are truly low-born in character, cannot go beyond to the farther shore. They're caught up in craving on all sides, drenched in it, while at the same time they blindly hold on to their vows, rituals, and rules. 
practicing insanely cruel and self-abusive austerities for a hundred years. Yet their hearts remain in the thick bog of ignorance, lost and unable to ever taste real freedom. That's because such individuals who are truly low-born in character cannot go beyond the farther shore. After all, no one who's captivated by and overrun by conceit could ever be truly tamed. Whereas without attaining to true samadhi, one can never turn into a true sage even if living all alone in the seclusion of the forest. But while being heedless and careless in one's practice, one cannot break free and cross beyond death's domain. But when you've left all manner of conceit way behind you, maintaining a serene tranquility that exudes throughout, having a heart in your chest and that is beautiful through and through, remaining utterly traceless and released. Then, while living all alone in the seclusion of the forest, staying heedful and fully aware in all that you do, you can indeed break free and cross beyond death's domain. Sad, sad, sad.